Well, we're delighted to be here, and um, I guess we'll both we'll speak. I'd like to speak generally about the very special relationship that we three have as artists. This is our fourth uh, exhibition together, and we have found that the resonance um, between our work is is really palpable and magnifies all. And we have um, to address uh, the title that we chose, Substrate. Um, for all of us, there is a, an underlying, beyond the, the surface work, there is an underlying uh, current that, um, that addresses sort of more archetypal elements in, in the work. Uh, all of our work has a, has a quality of layering over time, over physical material. And, um, in different ways, but all of us have that. It's, and I think we all feel it relates to life, that it's a layering, I know for myself, um, in my clay work, uh, uh, a layering of time and a layering of material and a layering of experience. So I think that that's uh, what unites all of us and also our intention that the artwork reaches out beyond our personal expressions um, to to consciousness and to the world beyond with intentions to, to leave something of good and something of, of healing. Um, so um, I can just segue to my own personal work. Um, I'm Hannah. I'm the clay artist uh, here. And um, my work is all just natural clay. Um, it is... Uh, my intention, I'm very much aware of clay both as a physical substance but as a symbolic substance. It is actually the earth itself. It is the silica um, and then the earth as a symbol of, of the feminine and of nurturing and, and of the beautiful planet on which we live that's quite beleaguered. So the work has, has kind of feet in different worlds. Um, it's made just the way it looks, um, layer by layer, by hand. It's, there's no artifice to it. It is, it is made over a long period of time in these thin layers. I have, um, let's see, five pieces of my moon series. Um, many people go, oh, it looks like a wasp's nest, which it does. Um, and that's fine because the little insects in their organic process, do layer by layer by layer, um, and that is good. These pieces had a almost whimsical quality as well, childlike, of, of looking at the moon um, in, in the way the little prince of Saint-Exupéry would look in the moon, and also the moon as, as a, a symbol of the feminine. Um, and the moon as a place where we first saw our beautiful little planet in perspective. So it's, it's all of those things. I also have um, right behind me Tears for the World, um, the installation. It was in my feeling um, uh, helpless in the face of, of the grief and pain in the world. Um, it was a way of, in my studio in Orcas, marking that and paying attention. And so it's kind of a, um, started out with just one, now with this uh, show its two pieces. People, I invite them to walk through it to experience with their bodies. Um, it's, it's tiny bones um, that I have made of clay. They are all made and, um, and bone as a symbol of its death and grief but also life and hope. So it's both those things. These are, um, uh, these are found objects found, found uh, you know, detritus of <laughs> industrial world. There it is. And, um, and then the bone, which is clay and, and string. So, and, and then lastly, I have my fragmentation series behind there, which is, um, there are four of those. That's my newest work. And that's, um, also, uh, same clay in layers. Uh, it's the, for me, it's the strata that I've worked with for about 10 years now that have broken apart, but are still somehow holding together. And it, it, I think it addresses um, my feeling of, of, of our world um, 
in, in a period of disruption, but hopefully holding together. Um, yeah, so, and then if anybody has any questions along the way, please, you know, for doses, please, please ask. And then I'll hand it over to my and friends and colleagues. If you walk through that, won't you step on something along the way? Not if you aim your body right through the center. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I have the mic in my pocket, so I'll stand close to okay. whoever is speaking. Excuse me. So I'm Susan Singleton. Um, I do the more architectural feeling pieces in the space. The um, trio ziggurat piece is kind of the piece that welcomes and wraps its arms around you as you enter. Um, I fought with this piece when I was making it, and I realize now that the reason that it always seemed incomplete is it really needed to be here with this other work to kind of finish it off. And I'm very pleased with the, with the balancing and the focus that it brings to our work. Um, my other pieces in that nature are um, the shroud ziggurat over on that wall, and then behind the partition, there's another one that kind of completes the three sets. Um, other than the large architectural pieces, my work um, takes on a more storytelling aspect in what I call the lexicon series. And that would be the um, houses that I call subtext that definitely relates to our substrate title, the notion of architecture and architecture as being so temporary that we are a people in movement and um, architecture can um, crumble and go back to um, the natural environment as we see the barns in the Skagit and um, actually in this series there's represented a little house that sits on orchids that I've photographed for years watching it kind of be reclaimed by the earth. In all of my work, um, I fight a couple of um, issues. I get very attached to the beautiful paper and the, um, and the objects that I lay down in the collage as I make them. But sometimes they don't work, um, and I have to become unattached and draw them backwards. And in this particular series of um, the houses, there were so many times when one was calling too loudly or too softly, and as a collection after they were done, I had a lot of rebalancing to do. Um, I'm really proud of them, and uh, I love the, the shelter and the, um, the comfort that the house structure brings. I also um, like the fact that they're a story, and they're kind of my story as I lay the work down, but as one observes them that doesn't really know my story, hopefully it will conjure up your own story and you can read into it whatever. Mm -hmm. It's abstract and you can read into it whatever story comes to you. And work that does that, I feel, in when, when I can do that in my work, it delights me. It's kind of, it doesn't belong to me, it's a message that goes outward. Yeah. Yeah. The um, other, Every time we do an a installation together, unbeknownst to our kind of tight planning that happens in the beginning, each one of us comes up with a magical new addition to um, the collection of work that we already have. And this time it was Hannah's fragmentation. And for me it was um, the pieces that are on that far wall that I call Helix. For um, Candace, she'll talk about her take refuge but um, we all came forward with a brand new, exciting piece that really will mark possibly new directions for our work. I love the motion in Helix and the fact that it's just, it started as um, trying to do a representational drawing of the inside of that spiral of a seashell that had long washed away. But as it evolved and I looked at the motion, it became a road and a path and a movement and a it didn't matter where it began, it kind of became its own thing. And um, I love the possibilities that holds for future work. 
Also on that piece, just by the by, a friend of mine gave me the faded paper in the back. It was how it housed a botanical collection that was given to um, Stanford oodles of years ago, maybe at the turn of the century. And at some point, they took the botanical specimens away from their paper and the beautiful little signatures that are on the edges of the paper. And they um, transferred it to something more permanent. But it left this bale of old paper that um, this friend, worked, she worked in the rare book collection there. And she moved from place to place. And I can kind of hear her husband going, honey, do we really have to move this box of old paper again? <laughs> and she kept saying, yes, it has a place. I just don't know where it is yet. And when she saw my work, she said, you must have this paper that I have. And I kind of ignored her. And years later, she gave me this treasure. And um, for the show, it finally kind of found, a, found its beginning. So I, I am in possession of more. I'm a little bit of a paper pig. <laughs> So that ends. I'm open for questions or um, comments. And I'd like to introduce you to Candace Sussel. Thank you. Yes, if you stand on the side. Thank okay. you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm uh, really honored to be here, and most of all, honored to share this space with these two wonderful women. Speak up. Okay, speak up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honored to be here and to share the space. And uh, this museum is, uh, is a beautiful, beautiful venue. And I'm really honored to be here. Uh, my work is uh, handmade paper. I, uh, I make each uh, sheet of paper individually uh, and imperfect. I, I want the imperfections uh, to be illuminated, so I add uh, uh, an iridescent uh, medium to the wax that they're infused with. Um, uh, it's uh, just cotton lenters. There's no sizing. And I developed the technique of making the paper uh, uh, truly out of the ordinary uh, traditional way. And um, they've evolved uh, with movement and, uh, and metaphor, uh, uh, a spiritual practice of repeating over and over and over again uh, just uh, the process that brings me uh, to a centered place and a focus. And out of that comes the, the, uh, the work. I, it's all fused together with heat and irons to create the movement in it. And, and um, my, um, the, the circle over here, the one drop is what it's called, is um, a piece that's in the uh, uh, Zen, tradition, uh, enzo means everything and nothing. It's all inclusive. Um, uh, and that was, was done. And then I moved to Trillium, uh, making this, this uh, uh, triangle. It started out as a triangle. And then I started uh, realizing the movement um, within the triangle to create a triangle inside, and trilliums are, uh, there's a lot of folklore in, in the trillium plant. Um, and it's rare, and uh, they're all over the place in the wild, but to transplant them isn't that easy. So um, I, I um, felt like with the triangles, with fragmentation, with this idea of the three of us, uh, that's what inspired that piece. And then um, Pink Refuge. Um, this is a, a piece um, that was uh, inspired by the documentary uh, by the artist Ai Weiwei. And he, um, 
he did a documentary called Human Flow, and you can get it on, uh, on the internet to watch it now. It was released, but um, uh, for public, and now you can only get it there. It's called Human Flow, and it's, it's, uh, it moved me so deeply to see these uh, 68 million refugees um, all over the world, 23 countries, there are people that are, they're, they're homeless. And, um, you know, through all sorts of tragedies. And um, the film itself was beautiful. And I felt like I could take uh, this notion of uh, housing, of tents, of uh, people living so in such transient uh, conditions for years and years and years, having their children in these places, and and that that idea of of human flow and flowing through the paper against so much, so much is against them. And that kind of comes full circle back to this museum, where. I we Wei. together came and visited mm -hmm. the Ai Weiwei show soon after you opened. Yeah. Yeah, that was very moving about, I, I don't know if all of you got to see it, but it was, it was, he's quite an amazing artist and uh, he moved me quite deeply. So, I think that's it. Anyone, questions or anything? Uh, it's molten, and uh, I think you can, uh, the video upstairs actually demonstrate, uh, it's not a demonstration, it's not a how-to, mm -hmm. but you can see I, I make the paper uh, individually on, a, I screen it, mm -hmm. and on a uh, piece of plywood, I press the wet pulp that has no sizing in it, no glue to hold it together, so it is just cotton fiber, mm -hmm. and then it dries, and then I, peel it off very carefully retaining all of the deckled edges because it can pull off, you know, it can get torn really easily. Then I paint hot wax and resin and uh, iridescent, uh, uh, pearlized iridescent and medium in it and, uh, and then hang it up and it hardens and so that, that's what holds the paper together. Um, and then um, I place them on the panels that have layers of uh, gesso and then layers of wax and, and resin. And as the piece ages, the resin in it cures like in an oil painting. Uh, you know, there are some Egyptian uh, uh, portraits that have encaustic paint still to this day, you know, Greece, I guess it was Greece. And uh, so the paper hardens, it stiffens, and, uh, and becomes stronger. It's very easy to clean them, They're not difficult. It's and then how do you um, attach them to your fabric? With irons, with irons, heat. Uh, and then I, then I fuse the two pieces together when they're going in different directions with two irons. Thank you. Thank you. We're lucky. <laughs> so are we. <laughs> it's a win win. <laughs> How long did it take to make this? Um, that's in three panels. Um, it can't fit in my studio. <laughs> <laughs> I had to uh, hang it up somewhere else to photograph it. Uh, uh, the, the way that I do it, my studio becomes a paper making studio and then that's changed and then I become, I, uh, uh, the, all the panels are made for me but I have to do shipping uh, brackets in the back for hinges that come out and lay it flat and, because, because I ship them. And then uh, 
Uh, and so then I'm a wood, you know, carpentry. Then I'm a painter because I gesso it. And so I don't work on one piece at one time. However, I have kept track of my hours, and that was 300 hours. So that I didn't keep track of, but that I did. <laughs> so, yeah. taking your time out to come and hear all of this and help us out. Thank you. You guys are terrific. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>